Alright, so we're going to have a look at a bit of a workflow example between Basehead and Pro Tools. So here we're working on a sound effects asset file for a video game. Uh, so we've got um, quite a large project here with a number of sound effects that we're putting together. Uh, this particular one here we're working on is just a door open and close sound. So if we have a quick listen to this one. So it's just the door opening and then slamming close. What we want to do is we want to modify this one here and uh, just add like a door creaking sound. So this particular sound effect requires a door to be opened, a slow creak, and then the door to slam closed. So we want to find a door creak to put into this section here. So I've just moved this here and what I'm going to do is place the cursor somewhere around about here where we want the creak to sort of start. And we're going to switch over to base head and see if we can find a suitable candidate. So before we get started uh, checking things out in uh, Basehead and finding a sound effect, uh, I might just point out a couple of quick options that um, you should be aware of before getting stuck into transferring files. And so first thing, if we go to Setup and go down to Session, then we get our session options that we're working on. Uh, so at the sample rate that we're working with is 48 kilohertz and a bit depth of 24 bit. Basically, we want all of our content to match this sample rate and bit depth. Uh, if it doesn't, then we can have things like artifacts or maybe the samples won't actually play back at the correct speed when we start rendering things down uh, out of our project. So we wanna try and make sure everything matches this sample rate when we're importing stuff. Luckily for us, Basehead will manage this automatically for us. So up here we have our transfer settings. What we wanna do is just make sure that the sample rate and bit depth match the project settings that we're using. And then we do have a quality setting that we can adjust as well. Now, any files that we start transferring out of Basehead, whether we use the drag and drop feature or spot to track or just tagging files, uh, all of those files will be run through this transfer converter and the uh, format will be changed to this format. So this takes the worry out of what kind of sample rates and bit depths we're dealing with. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna search for a door creak sound to import into our project. To find this, um, I'm using pretty much just cloud packs in this example. So all of the source content is just cloud packs that I've got. These are all free cloud packs. And then I've got a couple of purchased cloud packs that I've got here. These have been localized to my hard drive, so they're available locally to me. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna search through the available sound effects we've got from our cloud packs and see if we can find a door creak sound. So to find that, I'm just gonna enter in door and creak. Now entering two words with a space in between basically does an and search. So we need to find both these words in the description for a result to come back. So we'll see if we can find a suitable candidate in the results we've got. Now, some of these uh, may not quite sound what we're looking for because we want a deep sound, but what we can do is we can slow it down and see if it uh, sounds any better. So this one at the end, Slowing down the pitch actually is starting to sound sort of what I'm after. So we might start with this sound here. Uh, now, one thing to point out here is that um, any adjustments we make, so the slider here, I've actually decreased this by 55% to uh, play it a little bit lower. Uh, this will actually be applied when I transfer this file across to my project. So we can make basic edits and of course we can select just this part of the file. This is the part of the file that we want. Um, so I'm thinking that um, possibly this is about all I need, maybe to about here. I'm going to try this bit here. Uh, with this pitch down sound, uh, what I can do is just transfer this file across. Um, so I'm going to press S to send it. And it appears straight on my timeline where I've placed my cursor. So we'll give this a quick listen uh, how it sounds. So that's sounding 
actually not too bad. Uh, it obviously needs some work. Uh, I don't like the fact that it has cut itself off here. And I mean, obviously we have to shift this, but if we have a look at uh, this bit, bit here, uh, what I'd like to do is actually just simply uh, stretch this out a bit, but uh, I can see that uh, I only selected that amount. So what I'd have to do is actually go back into base head and readjust this, uh, uh, this handle here. Uh, however, there is a little bit of a tip uh, in regards to this. Um, to save us having to constantly go back, readjust things and, and re-spot files. If we go into the options, there's the option here to spot with handles. So if we activate this, we have a number of different handles that we can select. What this basically does is adds padding to the selection that we've made. So if we set this to spot with seven seconds of handles, this will actually add seven additional seconds to the front and seven seconds or to the end of the file, in this case, uh, to the end of the file. And so when we spot this to our project, if I just go back and I'll just delete this one. So without making any changes, I'm just gonna spot this again. And we can see we've got the same file spotted here. But now if I need to adjust the endpoint, I can actually drag this out a little bit. In, in fact, I can even drag the front of it out as well. So we'll still get the same selection that we've made. So the actual selection will be sent into our project, but we do have the ability now to adjust the handles and uh, readjust this to fit specifically what we need. Um, so I'm just going to try and uh, drag this out to here and now I have to realign my sample. Okay, so the only thing I'm noticing about the sample that I've chosen is that uh, it sounds okay, but it doesn't actually match sort of the characteristics of the original sample. Uh, so this sounds a little bit too dry. Uh, you can hear that uh, these samples that were here originally have quite a uh, bit of reverb to them. So they're you know in a large room. Uh, so what I wanna do is just adjust this file now and add some reverb. Now, of course we can add uh, effects and things like that within our project here. Uh, but that means that we're gonna have to either automate effects. I mean, these tracks are also being used for multiple other sound effects in our project. So what I wanna do is just get this piece of uh, audio sounding correct. So I'm gonna delete this again, and I'm gonna switch back. And uh, this time I'm gonna switch to the process panel. So in the process panel here, we can use effects to apply to our sound when we transfer it. So we can hear these effects when the effects rack is actually enabled. And these will also be applied when we transfer files across into our project as well. Uh, now I know that um, around about what I'm sort of after is going to be the large room reverb preset that I've actually got. And so this preset is a reverb that uh, has been created to uh, apply sort of a large room sound. So if we uh, have a listen to the sample here. So we can hear that we've got the reverb that should sound roughly close to sort of what we've, what we've already got. So I'm gonna spot this across into my project. Now you can see that this is taking just a little bit more time this time because it has to actually process the effect itself. And so now we've got the file across again, and uh, if we just have a quick listen to how this sounds. That's sounding uh, not too bad at all. So if we just put this right at the point there and have a listen to how this sounds. this is now sounding pretty good. So I'm quite happy with how this has gone and uh, we've managed to find a sound and import it with the correct characteristics very, very quick and easy. Now let's say we didn't find what we wanted. Um, so we're using these cloud packs here. Uh, we don't have a huge sound effects database of our own to really draw from at the moment. We're trying to sort of build this up. Uh, we really, really desperately need a sound that will match what we want. Uh, if we're not finding what we want locally here, we can consult this little icon up here. So you can see we've got 579 
listed here. This means that uh, online, Basehead has found 579 possible candidates that we could use. So if we click on this, what this will do is open up the online cloud database. So this is what is available to us using the cloud packs. So we could search through all of these. Not only can we have a look through the list, we can actually select any file in this list and instantly open it for preview. So the good thing is we can still preview. We can even adjust our playback settings and everything else. We can go all the way through. And then of course, if we find something that is useful in here, what we can do is just click this little buy pack button and the cloud pack will actually open up in cloud pack manager in the store here. And we can check out what this cloud pack is actually all about. So we can see what the price is. We can uh, then purchase it from here. If we want to preview what else is in this cloud pack, we can just click the view in base head. And this will now load the entire cloud pack files directly into base head. So we can now scroll through, have a look at all the different sound effects that we've actually got available to us uh, and click on any of these and preview them as well. And so this makes it really easy to explore all the sound effects that we could start adding into our own collection directly within Basehead without having to even leave the workflow. And not to forget, we can now switch straight back and uh, we just go straight back to our normal browser here and uh, we can start searching again. So hopefully this has been a useful demonstration on how we can use the speed and convenience of Basehead to find sound effects that we can use in our project.